Hi, George here. And today we'll be looking at Lightroom and looking at the differences between the different versions of Lightroom. I know it's kind of confusing nowadays. You'll see Lightroom Classic, you'll see Lightroom, you'll see Lightroom Web, Lightroom Mobile, all these different versions. And when you get Lightroom, you're actually getting all versions of Lightroom. It isn't like you're only getting one or the other. You get both of those versions and you also get the mobile and the web versions as well. The real question is, which one do you want to use? I'm starting off here in Lightroom Classic. This is the main desktop application that has all the bells and whistles. Everything that Lightroom has is included in here in Lightroom Classic. And this is normally used on a desktop computer. It takes a bit more power. And this is used by professional photographers who want to do all those real fine specifics to their images, make them as perfect as possible. You can do everything here in the Lightroom Classic. This also includes up here the library module right here, develop, map, the book module, slideshow module, print module for doing all of your printing chores, web module for making web galleries. Of course, your cloud is right over here at the final right-hand side. Normally when you're using Lightroom, whether it is classic or regular Lightroom, you'll be in this area here, library and develop. Notice that we have over on the right-hand side, the histogram right here showing all our colors. Left-hand side, we have our navigator. This is really useful if I zoom in a lot on this. I can then see where my zoom is over in the navigator window. I can even move the navigator window around to adjust my zoom. We have the film strip across the bottom. Let's see if we can go back to that one image I was using to begin with. And that's right here. There we go. Click once to zoom back out again. Presets, left-hand side. We have presets, snapshots, history, and collections. Snapshots and history are very useful if you want to save specific steps in the editing process and then get back to those easily. That's where you use history to find those steps and snapshots to take snapshots of those steps. Right-hand side, of course, we have all of our basic tools in here. This is the editing mode. Here's the crop mode. This is your removal mode. Red eye is right over here and masking is right there. And then a lot of different options down here going from basic all the way down here to calibration where you can choose which version of Adobe Camera Raw you're working with. And back to the left hand side again, let's just show our presets right here, all of our different presets. And also we have full menus up here for all the different modules, lots of menu options, lots of our tools in here, view options, setting options, a lot of stuff available in here. If you want an easy way to learn how to use Lightroom CC Classic, I have a complete training course for this program. It's updated clear through 2024, and I'll be adding in updates as things change. So I'll be adding in a new update here within a day or two for the brand new generative AI fill, which was just added in. You find my complete training course for Adobe's Lightroom program over on my website. I'll put a link for that right down there and also in the description. You can just click right over there. Okay, so now I'll go over and take a look at the regular Lightroom version, the non-classic version of Lightroom. And here we are in Lightroom. And you'll notice right off the bat, that the interface is a lot simpler. We don't have all those modules right-hand side. We still have our film strip at the bottom, that's fine. Left-hand side, we don't have the navigator over here. We don't have the presets, any of that stuff over here, left-hand side. So the basic layout has changed a little bit. We do have this whole community section up here, the Learn and Communities sections. You can show or hide that if you want to. The All Photos recently added all this stuff. This is basically from the library module. And we can see that right down below here. Click on this icon. Here's the basic library module layout. Everything that you're used to over in the library module, it's all right here. Different views. Here's a view without showing all the information. Here's a view with the information. We have a side-to-side -side view in here if you want it, and the full view. Now, unlike in Lightroom CC Classic, where you had the library and the develop modules, over here in just the straight Lightroom, they're merged together. So once I go into this view here, I'm automatically placed into the develop part of this program. Right-hand side, here's all of our standard tools. Here is the edit right here. Here's the crop. Here's the remove. There's your masking. There's also a version set option down here and a few more options down below right here. Notice in the options, we can show the histogram if you want to. You bring that up. Here's our histogram. I prefer the histogram over in the classic version, but this does the same thing. We don't have any calibration option down in here that's missing. Another difference is this button way up here. This is where you find your presets. Click on that and the presets open over here on the right-hand side instead of the left-hand side where they open up over in Lightroom Classic. Same exact presets. Open these up and just like before, roll over these, see which preset you like. Choose that as your final output preset. So you can really see the main difference here is that Lightroom is now vastly simplified. Now, the way I think about these is 
let's say you have a photo studio set up, you're doing a lot of photography, you have your computer in there, that's where you're going to be having your Lightroom CC Classic. We have all the bells and whistles. Everything you need to do is right there. Let's say you also have a laptop that you take with you on your jobs. When you're going out someplace, you're taking your photographs, but you're not going to be doing any prints, for instance. You won't be doing anything by making web galleries, those kind of things. You don't need that there, but you do need your organization and editing tools, and all of that is available here in the regular Lightroom version. So this is really kind of the laptop version. That's the way I think of it. Now, there are two more versions of Adobe's Lightroom. If you go up here to the cloud, you'll see them listed right here, Lightroom Mobile and Lightroom Web. We can connect those if you want to. I know I don't have these synced up, but I can sync them up. Let's take a fast look at these. Now, I haven't set up Lightroom Mobile on my smartphone. I just don't use that, so no reason for that. But you can simply take your smartphone, scan this. It will install the program onto your smartphone, and then simply sign into your Adobe account. And that then links this up with everything else. They will all be sharing the same cloud space storage. So they'll all be sharing the same library, basically. And then you can do a lot of your editing very quickly right here on your mobile device. Now, personally, I wouldn't recommend that because the screen is too small. These screens aren't that great. In a lot of cases, you really can't see what you're doing. You know, most screens have a real hard time in sunlight, for instance. You already know that. So much better if you have a regular computer screen, a nice laptop in a nice room someplace to do any of this kind of adjustment. But there are times when you might know that you need just a little fast something. You're doing a fast project, and then this will take care of that for you. Close that down. There also is the Lightroom Web. This is an online version of Lightroom. Again, minimized version of Lightroom. Both of these come with your Lightroom account, so you already have all these things accessible. Now let's click over into here. Some new stuff about that generative fill. I'll be doing a video about that soon. And as you can see, through the Lightroom Web, I have access to my library. I can share photos right here. I can download an image down to the desktop or over to the mobile. I can check my cloud storage right there. If you want to see the editing tools, you have to click into an image. Just click into this one. And we now have our editing tools on the right-hand side. Here's all of our presets right there. And here's your basic editing tools right in here. So it's all accessible to you. There we go. Here's the crop. Here's the remove section, including that new generative AI. Here's our masking section. So all of our center tools are available over here inside of this version. Hit that X right there, and we're back into the library part of the web. Now, where this is useful, of course, is if you're using a different browser, possibly somebody else's computer, you still have access to your stuff this way by logging into your account and then using the Adobe Lightroom web to access your library and your editing tools. Okay, let's get this out of the way. There we go. Now, you don't have to use all the different versions if you don't want to. All the tools are the same. They may look a little different in their placements in the way that the menus for them look over here, but they all work exactly the same. And the reason to choose one or the other really is a personal choice. What I like to do, again, as I mentioned before, is if I'm working on the desktop in my studio, then I use the classic version because it has all the bells and whistles. Everything is there for my use. If I'm working out in the field with my laptop, I have the Lightroom copy installed on the laptop for out on a photo assignment. Personally, I don't use the mobile version. I prefer my laptop for that. And I've never found, again, for me personally, a good reason to use the web version. But you do have access to that as well. Now, if you want to learn a lot more about how to use Lightroom, I have a complete training course for that, and you'll find a link for that in the description and right there on the screen. Make sure you hit that like button, click on subscribe, hit the bell icon when you subscribe so you get notifications of my new videos. I'm doing videos all the time, and I'll see you next time.